Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about 11 spring knit patterns as well as my specific knitting plans. Grab something cozy to work on and let's get started. Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to the channel by Emwu. I'm Emwu, AKA Marianne. And in today's video, we're gonna be talking about everything related to my spring knitting plans. I'm gonna share 11 different knitting patterns that have caught my eye, point out the specific ones that I personally wanna do, as well as share the yarn that I hope to use for those projects. Towards the end, I'll probably throw in kind of like a little update on some work in progresses that I'm hoping to finish in the next couple months. Before I go into the whole like spring related stuff, I just wanna quickly point out what I'm wearing today. So this is my recently completed Alder sweater by Rebecca Clow, also known as the Crea Bea on both YouTube and Instagram. I love this sweater so much. I think it's probably my all time favorite sweater. And honestly, it's probably too warm to wear this today, but I really wanted to wear it in a video. I didn't get to wear it in my last podcast episode. So here it is. If you guys are wondering, I knit this up in the West Yorkshire Spinners Fleece Blue Faced Lancaster DK. I probably got the order of those words wrong, but that's all there. Um, in the color Berry and Ekra, which is this beautiful off-white color. And I'm obsessed with it. It's a really beautiful, like, slip-stitched all-over pattern raglan sweater. Definitely check it out if you're interested. I, I love it. I love it so, so much. So before we jump into the 11 knitting patterns that I want to share with you guys today, I want to quickly take a minute and define what spring is to me and how that influences my wardrobe. For those of you who don't know, I live in Canada, so the northern half of the hemisphere, and we typically, or at least where I live, I typically get very distinct seasons throughout the year. Spring, to me, in my mind, generally starts around March, sometimes a little earlier, sometimes a little later, and it goes until the June-ish time, maybe mid-June. That's when the heat kind of starts to pick up where I live. And so during that time, the weather can kind of be all over the place. In some cases, it could be like as warm as like summertime, like 30 plus degrees. That's what happened last year. And in other times, it could be still really cold and we'll be getting like snow and ice into like well into April. Because the weather is all over the place and it can change drastically throughout the day, I really think of spring as like a transitional layering time in terms of my outfits and my wardrobe. That means a lot of like lighter pullovers, maybe like thicker long sleeves or thicker tank, not tank tops, thicker t-shirts, stuff like that to kind of help transition the really wool heavy sweater vibes from the winter into kind of the more like lighter silky tank top t-shirt vibes into the spring. In terms of colors, I think this is the time to kind of embrace more traditional spring colors. So pinks, blues, greens, things that are a little bit more like pastel or light and bright. I, it's just so much fun to incorporate those into your wardrobe and I'm hoping that kind of shows through. I have a little bit more color than I have historically, although I'm kind of in my color phase right now, which I'm very much for. With that all in mind, I've definitely curated 11 knitting patterns to share with you guys that kind of fall into the scope and give a little bit of variety in terms of like what you would like to make for the spring season. You can definitely influence these by the yarn selection and the color selection. In my mind, spring is definitely still like a merino, maybe merino cotton season, not necessarily into the plant base that are definitely more prominent into the summertime, but definitely can lean a little bit further away from like the super heavy worsted, maybe even DK type of wool garments, if that makes sense. All right, so with that, Let's get into the patterns. While these patterns are in no particular order, I did group together like the top sweater cardigan related stuff first, and then in the latter half, I'll talk about accessories. The first pattern that I have to share with you guys is the Felice Pullover by Audrey Borrego. This is a sport weight pullover knit on size three millimeter needles and comes in sizes one to 10, which ranges from a finished bust circumference of 90 centimeters to 80 centimeters. The recommended ease is 20 centimeters. And overall, this is just a super classy pullover that is mostly stockinette all over and has a little bit of ribbing detail along the front left section. With that little bit of rib detailing on the side, it has a little bit of visual interest that I think is 
a perfect balance for the springtime. This would be great as kind of that transitional piece towards like the cooler side of spring because it is still a pullover so a sweater that you could wear and just chuck on but also since it's sport weight it's not as heavy as like the worsted DK stuff that a lot of people tend to gravitate towards in the winter months. This pattern would be great if you picked a really fun vibrant yarn and let that kind of do all the talking and I don't know I definitely don't usually gravitate towards like bright colors but this in like a really bright mustard yellow might be really fun. The second one here is also a pullover. This one is the Colette pullover by Sorry Norland. This is a DK weight pullover on three millimeter needles. And she recommends using Knitting for Olive Merino held with Knitting for Olive Soft Silk Mohair. I think the mohair definitely gives this more of like a winter vibe, but depending on the yarn that you would choose for this, you could definitely pull it more into the spring or warmer like time place, if that makes sense. Um, it should be, it would be a little bit heavier because it's DK weight on three, three millimeter needles. But honestly, I just love the way that this one looks because while it is cabled, which I think is usually associated with warmer months, the cables are really big, which I think gives it more of that like spring vibe. The available sizes for this pattern are one to nine. That means that the finished garments bust is 101 to 177 centimeters. The recommended ease here is 20 to 30 centimeters of positive ease. And I did want to flag that while this technically doesn't fit into the size inclusive definition of like fitting a bust of 60 inch after accounting for positive ease, I think it's off by a couple centimeters maybe if that. I did want to include it here because Sarley Norlin typically has really size inclusive patterns and this is one of the ones that I actually want to make. So quickly, I saw this, I saw a version of it, I think someone on the Ravelry group, not group, but like on the Ravelry project page made kind of like a limey yellow version and I thought it was so cute for spring. I didn't end up going that vibe. I ended up pulling together this Quince & Co's Chickadee in the color Bird's Egg which is this beautiful blue to make that sweater in. So oh I just dropped one. I have six games of this and I think it is a DK. Oh this is a sport weight actually. So it's a little bit lighter but I think combination of this like really fun blue color on a little bit lighter of a yarn would make this a really perfect spring piece and so I'm really excited to cast on I've been thinking about it for ages I have thought about doing a contrast like collar and contrast cuffs as like a little bit more of like a fun play haven't decided fully but I also want to give a shout out to the Instagram fam for helping me choose this color because I was between this blue and just like a normal canvas color and you guys helped me pick this one, which I think is perfect for this pattern. So I'm really excited to cast this on this spring. Yeah, can't wait. Moving on to the next one. This one is like a wrap cardigan. I've talked about it before, so if you've heard of this, I apologize. But this is the Robinson Wrap Cardigan by Florence Miller. It's also a DK weighted yarn wrap top on four millimeter needles. And she actually made a test call for a newer version. I don't want to say newer, but like an updated, I guess, version of this. Don't remember all the details because I remember seeing it in Florence's stories and was like, oh, that's interesting. But I wasn't going to make another wrap party and so I didn't pay too much attention to it. But just wanted to throw that out there if any of you guys were interested in maybe a slightly different version of it. But as I was saying, this is a DK weight wrap top on four millimeter needles. The sizes available are A to I, so like the letter A to I, um, and it's designed to fit a bust of 75 to 155 centimeters or, and or a waist of 61 to 138 centimeters. This one's really fun because I've actually made this one. It's going to be brutal to show you guys because I find wrap cardigan so different, but I've made this, I actually adore it. This one, the reason why I wanted to include it was because the yarn that I chose to make it in makes it really springy in my opinion. The recommended yarn that Florence provides is the Knitting for Olive Merino held with Knitting for Olive Soft Silk Mohair. I ended up doing a non-mohair version and used the Katina, I wanna say Sita Merino, 
Is that the name? It was a merino silk blend in this beautiful like sage green color. You can kind of see it's a little bit marled and the whiteness in there I think is the silk like strands and the drape of this and the wear of this is like perfect for spring. It's light, it's airy and it's still warm but it's definitely not the same kind of wool warm and I think like when you have the spring weather it's great to look for silk or plant slash animal blended yarn and I really really like this I can't wait to wear it a little bit more in the spring I haven't been wearing it too much in the winter time because it is a little bit more of like a cooler type of fabric um, it's still warm don't get me wrong because it still has merino in it but it's a little too cold for my personal taste in like minus 15 degrees celsius weather so really excited for this one would highly recommend the pattern it was really straightforward to follow i will say if you're looking at my my finished project photos compared to like florence's mine isn't as form-fitting and i think that isn't a testament to the yarn because it is a little bit more drapey than merino usually is Moving on to pattern number four. This is a, yet another pullover, and this is the Moon Crush Pullover by Jacqueline. And this is a color blocked boxy fit sweater with set in sleeves, and it's fingering weight. So this is fingering weight on 3.5 millimeter needles, which means it should have a really drapey fabric. I think historically, a lot of people like using a fingering weight on like three millimeters so that sizing up a little bit would probably give a little bit more openness to the fabric and this is a color work pattern done in intarsia which i have no experience in but i'm definitely very interested and i think you can make it really fun and very springy with using a lot of bright fun colors so in her samples she has options of doing like a three color version or a two color version and you could do something like pink and a green or pink and a blue there's like a lot of endless possibilities for this i saw a version where someone actually turned this into a tank top which i also thought was really 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 adorable this is available in nine different sizes ranging from a finished garment bust circumference of 90 to 170 centimeters the recommended ease is 10 to 15 centimeters of positive ease and overall i think this one's so fun it definitely would be quite a bit of knitting given the fingering weight but the possibilities are honestly endless and i think just the fabric that i have in mind with the fingering on 3.5 would be perfect for the springtime next pattern here is the cardi jumper by ines olivria and this is a sport slash fingering weight classic cardigan that was designed to be worn both forwards and backwards and we love a multi-purpose cardigan cardigans i think are great for spring because you can just throw them over like a tank top and this one's a really cool pattern because it actually comes in two versions so the original one is a fingering weight held with a mohair and it has eye cord button bands and it comes in a regular length and then last year i think late last year she made an updated version which is a slightly heavier fingering weight merino and uses a double knit button band. Both of them are glorious. Both of them are super classic. You can make a plain colored one. You can make a striped one. I think, oh, garage is opening. Okay, we're back. I apologize if the camera has shifted a little bit. The battery died at the same time as the garage was opening and it was just a whole mess, but we're back. <laughs> I don't remember what I was talking about in terms of like the last sweater, but I think I was mentioning that Given the two options and the versatility of having kind of like a simple base of a stockinette cardigan, you could do a lot of different things in terms of stripes or leaving something plain, having like a fun color, or if you were really daring, you could do kind of like multicolored, I'm not sure. But overall, I think it's just a great staple to have in your wardrobe if you wanted to do something clean and classic to kind of throw over anything. This comes in 16 different sizes and it's graded for busts 76 centimeters to 155 centimeters. Alrighty, moving on to kind of more top related because that's more of like pullover, sweaters, cardigan vibes. I have four tops to talk about. The first one is the Slightly Sassy V by Amy Shear. And this is a really sweet V-neck kind of t-shirt design. It is available or she has the options of written up in terms of doing a t-shirt style or even like a three-quarter length 
And this is just a simple top that I think would be really versatile in the spring in the same way that the cardigan would be. This one is fingering weight on 3.5 millimeter neo. So again, with a little bit more of like a drapey vibe and is available in sizes A to I, which cover finished garment bust circumference of 82.5 centimeters to 157.5 centimeters. The positive ease recommended for this one is five to 12 centimeters. And she has this design to accommodate a different chest tissue availability. Um, she mentions that in the pattern, if you are a little chestier and you want to add a little bit more fabric on the front to account for that, this has been written in. If you're on the smaller bust side, apparently there's also an option for that. So this gives you a lot of range and accessibility in terms of tailoring the garment to fit you. I think the V-neck option is just like a great one to throw in because I think a lot of like sweaters and tank tops and t-shirts are all like crew style this like our circular style and so just throwing a little bit of variety of v-neck is a great option too the next one here is the souffle top by laura penrose this is an all over mohair shirt with a beautiful ruffle detailing now i've made the summer souffle version of this and she also has like a thick chunky version she also has a children's version she has like a whole souffle collection so there's probably something for everyone if you're interested in making like a different version of this one and i would definitely recommend the summer souffle as a summer knit i love that shirt i love the way that one fits this one is a little bit of a looser one i think it's the original souffle and it's a mohair in the sense that it's held single on the top and then held double on the bottom with a really beautiful ruffly frill. I don't know if it's written in the pattern, I believe so, but there's definitely samples of people doing a short sleeve version or a long sleeve version with a little bit more of like a balloon sleeve for kind of like more of a romantic vibe. And so this one is, I think, super fun for the spring despite it being mohair because of the airiness that this overall garment would be. The sizes available for this one are 1 to 10, which covers finished garment bust of 71 centimeters to 162 centimeters, and it's designed to have 5 to 10 centimeters of positive ease. This one is another pattern that I actually plan on knitting up this spring, and I have the yarn here in a plastic bag, so please hold while I do the crinkling. <laughs> Okay, so I picked up five skeins of Sandis Garn Tin Silk Mohair for this one. This is in the color 3511, which is this really pretty, like, pale pink. It's like a peachy pink. I think it's so sweet for the summer. I think it would make such a pretty, like, all-over blouse. And my rationale for this, as much as I'm going to be knitting in the spring, is so I can actually wear it for the Taylor Swift concert that's happening in November. <laughs> is that a little bit of a workaround? I think it will be a great spring top to have. Really fun, flirty, like, and a really beautiful pink pastel vibe. But yeah, the primary reason why I wanted to make this is that I'm going to the Taylor Swift concert with my sister and one of my best friends in November when she's here in Canada and or for the Toronto portion because I think she's going to Vancouver afterwards. And I wanted to do kind of like a very airy, like lover inspired vibe. And I saw this souffle pattern and I fell in love with it and I thought it would be perfect. So I picked up this yarn for that and I'm gonna hopefully get to finish it this spring, wear it in the springtime, and then embrace it a little bit more when Taylor Swift comes around and we'll be jamming out to her. So that's my plan for this one, really excited for that one. If it's anything, how I loved the summer souffle, I cannot wait to get my hands on this one because again, love the summer souffle so much. I really wanna make a version without the frill because I think it's just the perfect circular yoked t-shirt design and I love the way that fits. That's, I'm kind of going everywhere. I do have plans to knit this one this spring and I will keep you guys posted in terms of how that goes. And if any of you guys are going to the Taylor Swift concert <laughs> at any point or have gone, please let me know if you guys did any knit or like fiber related like outfit for her because I know the Swifties can go all out there. I'm not really into bedazzle, but I did want to do a little bit of something special. So Hence my Taylor Swift souffle. All right, the last two patterns in terms of garment related ones that I have to share with you are both t-shirts. And the first one is the Tolsta Tee by Rebecca Clow. This is a 
fingering or DK weight raglan t-shirt that she has published. And this one is available in sizes one to 10 for a finished bust circumference of 80 centimeters to 169.5 centimeters. And the recommended ease is zero to eight centimeter of positive ease. There are a ton of samples of this one, so it'll be really easy to find inspo, but I think this really is designed to be just like the perfect raglan t-shirt that you can go to. I actually want to make a version of this one, but I want to make a long sleeve version, kind of to fulfill that like long sleeve light sweater category in what I personally like to wear. And so this one is kind of tied for the next pattern that I'll talk about because I'm not entirely sure which direction to go. So the other one is the Coloring Book Tee by Amy Scher. This is the same designer as the um, slightly sassy V that I was talking about earlier. This is also a raglan t-shirt, but she has compound raglan shaping in this one, which means the raglan increases along the shoulder are dynamic in the sense that the rate isn't constant. The Coloring Book Tee is available in sizes A to I for a finished bust circumference of 85 centimeters to 165 centimeters. Recommended ease here is 7.5 to 12.5 centimeters of positive ease. I really like how on her t-shirt example, she has kind of like a contrast color cuff on the cuffs and the collar, which I think are really fun. But yeah, like I said, haven't decided on which one I wanna make between this one and the Tolsta. And if I do, I'm definitely going to be incorporating more of like a long sleeve version. Those are all of the garment ones. The last two that I have here are accessories. And the first one is a little shawl, and that is the Lesty shawl by Audrey Borrego. It's a DK weight shawl scarf with beautiful textures throughout it. It is worked on through 4.5 millimeter needles and comes in one size, but she mentions that it's adjustable in the pattern, so it could be a great stash buster. I think shawls don't fit into a specific season because there's definitely different purposes for all them. I think it's a great piece to have on hand for the spring for those layering days. You can wear it as a scarf if it's really cold. You can throw it over your shoulders on top of like a t-shirt and tank top if you wanted to have that as an option, or you could just wear it as like a fun pop of color. I'm not sure, whatever floats your boat. And this one, while it is DK, I think if you were to go for like a plant-based fiber DK one for this one, that would be really great. Whether you look into this pattern or just shells in general, I think they're so versatile and be, they are great for the springtime as well. The last thing is kind of like a fun throw in and this is the shorty sock set by Summer Lee. I know a lot of people like knitting like wool knit socks for the fall and winter and I do too, don't get me wrong. But I think that to a degree like socks have a role in the spring and summertime too. I know a lot of people like wearing like sandals and stuff but I'm a, I'm a sock lady. I like wearing socks all year round. I get cold feet <laughs> any time of the year. I, I will wear socks with Birkenstocks in the middle of summer. Judge me all you want. Um, and so I think shorty socks are perfect for those times if you still want to have a little bit of a wool kind of knitting vibe but you don't want to commit to the full like length of a warm rustic sock. So this pattern is available in sizes small to extra large, which equates to fitting a foot circumference of seven to 10 inches around the ball of the foot. Um, for reference, I'm a size seven and I typically knit the 64 stitch like version of them, which I think is small if I'm not mistaken. And this pattern is fun because it has three different options that you can make. They, she has a basic one, that's just like a quintessential shorty sock set that probably looks like you would buy them from the store like structure wise. She has one with a frill which I think would be really cute with like converse. If you did like a really pop of color with white converse that'd be so cute. And one with pom poms which again really fun and festive. And honestly I think socks with sneakers and like dresses are really cute so definitely a spring outfit vibe if you're interested. So those are the 11 patterns that I have to share with you guys. As I switch into gears for explaining what other things I want to knit in my 2024 spring knitting plans, I just want to quickly recap um, so it's all in one place. I have plans to do the Colette Pullover by Sari Norland in this beautiful Quince & Co chickadee base in the color Bird's Nest. 
I want to knit the Souffle by Laura Penrose in the Tin Silk Mohair from Santa's Garn in the color 3511. And then I want to make either the Tulsa tea or the coloring book tea long sleeve version. Haven't decided which one. But the other things that I want to work on are like work in progresses that have been on the needles for quite some time that I'm hoping to wrap up this spring season. The first and foremost one is a pair of socks. These ones, if you have been following for a while, might look a little familiar. I think I started them back in like November or something, maybe even earlier. But these are the Guernsey sweater socks from the Hello Sailor sock pattern by Summer Lee. And it's a beautiful like cabled slash pearl row detailed socks. It's probably a little hard to see because of like the busyness of the pattern, but there's a little bit of kale billing on the side here. And then it has like pearl rows every once in a while. I'm making a shorty version of this to kind of go along with the fact that I like shorty socks. And this is knit in the Hedgehog Fibers sock base in the color Serengeti. I picked this up when I was in Alaska last year, which was really fun. The other thing that I want to finish up in this springtime is a cardigan. This one is for my husband, which if you're watching, please jump to here because this is a surprise in terms of like the actual garment. I will give you three seconds. Three, two, one. Thank you. So this is the Eva cardigan by Petite Knit. I started this last year. Um, because my husband's a pretty big cardigan guy and he, I was like, I want to knit you something. And so I just decided to do this. I, while in retrospect, I probably would have picked a different pattern because Petite Knit's Eva cardigan isn't size inclusive. I've already started it, so I'm going to finish it. This is knit up in Santa's Garn Sunday held double. Is it? Yeah. Sunday held double in the color almond, which is this off-white almondy cream color, and then into the woods, which is this kind of brown, kind of green undertone. It looks like tree bark, which is really, really nice. And I want to say it's, I think it's into the woods. I almost want to say that it's out of the woods, but that's a Taylor Swift song, so I don't, don't think it's that. But yeah, this is a cardigan that I've been working on for a while. I actually think I could probably get it done if I really just like sat down and knit it. But the problem with this one is that it's a lot of back and forth and that much purling is a little hard on my hands. So I've been kind of interspersonally doing this one, but I really want to get it done for him because I think it would be great as a transitional layering piece for spring, which is the theme of today's video. <laughs> The last couple things I want to do this spring are the testaments that I'm currently working on. I have three in progress. One of them is a silk t-shirt, which leans a little bit more summer, but I'm going to throw that in here because I need to get it done before July. The second one is a long sleeve fingering weight pullover. And then the third one is a vest that might not seem very spring. I think vests skew a little bit more fall. But honestly, I kind of see fall and spring kind of vibes, almost interchangeable, maybe slightly different colors. But at the same time, it's all about being able to account for the really warm days and the really cold days and the mix of the sporadicness of those in the seasons. And so I think vests can be equally as spring as they are as fall. So those are the three testaments that I have. I will share a little bit more about them in the next podcast episode. Um, but... Those are all my spring knitting plans. I have a lot planned. I hope I get through them. I think when I did this last was my fall knitting plans. And while I did do a lot of what I wanted to talk about in that one, there were still a handful that I didn't quite finish, which is totally fine. Plans ebbs and flow. This is more so aspirational plans. We'll see how far we get through them. But I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Please let me know in the comments below if you guys have any spring knitting plans or if you like planning at all, if you don't, that's totally cool. I'm definitely a buy yarn as I plan kind of person. And so I've been planning a lot of this for a while and I'm really excited that it's now the season that I get to knit them up. Again, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye for now.